Now we'll just turn all of our armor into points, and we should be good. Let's see it, Yalmar. Boom. It's a lot of points. We're going to be trying out some of the new Skellige cards in Endless Voyage, so should be pretty interesting. I always liked Endless Voyage. So we're playing Onslaught with Crystal Skull. Crystal Skull is ideally on a funeral boat, although on Crate Longship's also pretty good. Probably on Crate Longship's a little better, but funeral boat's newer, so you know, might put it on that one instead. As far as that, like I said, we're playing Endless Voyage, so Endless Voyage is quite strong. It gives you a lot of value. The Bjorn Drakkar is really good synergy with the leader and some other cards in the deck. You do really hope that the Endless Voyage doesn't get Heat Wave, though, because you really want that second Drakkar. As far as the rest of the deck, we're playing Yalmar Seawolf. He's new. Deploy Melee Clash with an enemy. Ideally, he has a bunch of armor because you're playing pirates and he's a pirate. So in, a, in an ideal scenario, he's Clash. He's just doing 10 damage and his armor is protecting him. And then when you play a raid, you remove all his armor and the adjacent pirate and ship's armor and boost them by the amount removed. So this is kind of where Demon Corsair was played before, right? The Corsair would remove two armor and boost himself by two, so it was a way to get value out of the armor you didn't need. But Yalmar's going to do that in way better, so ideally, we definitely want him living. Um, the problem with him living is that he's a 10, so the opponent isn't... It's not like he's a 5 where they just remove him and you don't, they don't lose, you don't lose much tempo. If they remove 10 points from your board you're gonna lose a fair amount of tempo but it's still a really good effect and playing a raid in the same turn as yalmar i don't think we can um it's probably possible somehow but we're just gonna play yalmar clash and then play a raid afterward and use his effect it's worth noting there's not many raids in our deck so we've got um naval supremacy raiding fleet abortage and i put in one gunning slash we don't have too many raids but the ones we have, we'll have to make use of. And ideally, we save one to play after Yalmar. So, that's what's going on with him. Then we have Croc on Crate. Same as always. It's really good value. Gives you armor in your hand. Helps you set stuff up. Helps set up Yalmar. And then when you play your pirate ship next to him, it clashes. Just more clashing. I like clash as a mechanic. Glad to see more of it in here. We have Justinia on Crate. She is veteran, so you want to wait till round two or three for her. Where she does 7 or 8 damage. Preferably 8 damage. I'm not too sure about Justinia. Um, the thing with her damage is it's really good for pinging away enemy, pinging away enemy things to get the armor for Yalmar. Which is the main reason we're running here right now. And it could also set up like a wild boar to see if you want to run that after it got buffed. But for now we're going to try it out and see what we think. The ping damage should be useful because it should give us armor gives us some removal if we play it on like an empty board which is probably worth it well not empty like if they play like a reaver or something and then they mobilize it and you can kill it potentially not they mobilize it because it's too big but you know what i'm saying like they play something and you want to kill and you can kill it with this so hopefully you have the armor on it but it certainly has p potential would also combo pretty well with dagger then we have care troll day so this is in create a play a bronze on crate unit there's a list of them here they're Quite a few of them are actually decent, so we'll play this, and then the cool part about this card is the order. The six armor then clash effect. Quite like that one. So we'll be seeing what we can use that on, but hopefully we get some good removal with it. And having that on resilience just gives us another nice way to control the board. Then we have another new card, the Naval Supremacy. It is a raid. We create and play a bronze Skellige ship, which is pretty good. And then while in graveyard, whenever unit is damaged, damage it or play to damage it by one. This should benefit us because our unit should have armor. And then again, when this damages an enemy unit, it gives us armor and everything in our hand. So ideally, this is probably going to do like about seven damage to them and about zero to us because ours are getting blocked by armor. So it's probably about seven ping damage and then a bronze ship. So I think that's going to be pretty good. You don't want to see this squirreled, but we'll see what can happen. Then we have Black Hand and Bjorn. I like Black Hand. You can play, if you cut Black Hand and then one of the higher cards, you could probably slip in Fakusha. Or you could cut uh, some more provisions and fit in... Uh, where is he? 
Heart of Terror if you wanted to. Like those are decent options. You can always put in a Covenant of Steel too if you want to protect Croc. So there's a bunch of options there. Anyway, moving on. We have the Raiding Fleet. It just thins our deck of card and plays out our ship. I wanted to play more to the ships and the raids because that's kind of what all the new cards are. I figured it'd be fun to go with this. And it thins our deck, which is nice. We're not playing an Oniromancy or anything like that. So as far as consistency, we have thinning. We have three thinning and a maxi, I believe. So we should be okay, but this helps just thin out things early and the bleeding could be useful. It makes them something damaged. Terror of the Seas is our finisher. Other than uh, Yalmar, if, one thing that might be interesting is if the opponent doesn't play tall units, you can always just use Yalmar on Terror of the Seas and then not use its order for all of its armor. So it gives a little more flexibility to the deck, I think. Because other times where the opponent just plays low units, a lot of times you're just like sitting there with your units playing for like three or four, and you don't really have a way to take advantage of that. But now you do with Yalmar. So I'm curious to see how that plays out. We have Abordage. So this is our other raid. It's new. Two damage, and then Bloodthirst 2. Play a pirate from your hand, then draw a card. So the Bloodthirst 2 helps get the, or the damage, because helps set up the Bloodthirst. The Bloodthirst plays a pirate, which can take advantage of the Bloodthirst. And you draw a card, so it's basically cycling through our deck. And we've got a nice appearance by uh, Saris here. And then we have Maxi. She's going to help make sure we draw our Endless Voyage and Yalmar. We have our Oncrate Longships. Just set them up, ping away. Good stuff. Two deranged Corsairs and Oncrate Armorsmith. Which I regret to say, I recorded a video. I recorded the re the. Re my reaction to looking at the Skellige card reveals and said Armor Smith was like the worst on crate card and then they buffed it in the patch notes so that's no longer true but anyway it boosts an allied unit by the amount of armor in the highest armor unit in your hand ideally you get like 15 20 armor on something in your hand and then this is a ridiculous card so that's the idea I think it's gonna be really good and then we've got after that one the gutting slash this could be anything I just put in a gutting slash because I wasn't sure we had enough raids for Yalmar um, you could swap this out for Peller, Squirrel, a second Funeral Boat, whatever you want, really. Then we have two Light Longships. I don't think I've explained those. The seagulls and the Funeral Boat. So Funeral Boat is a new one. Uh, whenever an enemy card enters either graveyard, damage a random enemy by one. Pings are good. It gives you armor. It helps get more reach on your cards. It's just good. The opponent plays a special card this triggers. If you kill an enemy card, this triggers... There's just so many ways for this to trigger that it sh I can't imagine it being too bad in the deck. We are going to only try out for, with one for now, though. I was considering a second one, but then I put in Gutting Slash for the raids. And then, obviously, Seagull. Seagull combos super well with this. You Seagull, you get three damage, spawns three Seagulls in your graveyard, and then this fires off three damage. So, nice combo there. Anyway, that's the deck. Can't wait to try it out. I've always liked Pirates. Hopefully it, w hopefully it works out pretty well. I hope this ship's synergy and stuff is at least pretty good, because I like the idea. Carapace, this is probably Ogres. If we can get to a long round three with Voyage, we should be doing well. But it might be hard to get there. Croc's a nice card for round one. Let's see, this could work. Funeral Boat goes well with a Boardage. Uh, do we want this Armor Smith? I think we'll put him back. He's, he's better later when we actually have a lot of bronze or a lot of armor on our cards. I do like the double abordage. I think we want to play Maxi, so I think we might actually put back. No, Corsair is nice here. It's just doing damage stops the might triggering. We'll put this one back. It's a black hand. And we should redraw one more time. I guess we will put back a Corsair. Start off with the longship. Might get Lord Riptided. We'll see. This also prevents it from playing Neckers easily. Ice Troll to the Graveyard. Uh, I confess I don't know what's going on. Let's just Maxi. Where is our Voyage? Ooh, yeah, that's not going to work out. Let's stick our Gutting Slash on the bottom, I guess. I don't think we need it here. Yeah, put that one on the bottom. We did discard again. What are we doing? Yeah, I really don't know what he's doing here. I think he's just trying to avoid giving us armor. Which is weird for the Ice Troll because it had two armor. 
Maybe we'll just play the funeral boat. I get what he's doing. He thinks he can't win round one, doesn't want to give us armor. I get it. He's still annoying, though. We might have to pass here. See, all this is value from damage. Old spear tip. Triple leader. We'll let him have it. The problem with that round is we two had two abortages, which we can't play if he's just discarding his units. Otherwise, we would have been in a much better spot. Let's put this back. Looks like he's not going to try and give us units. Okay, good. We drew some important cards here. Let's see what he opens with. I wouldn't be surprised if he just passes. There's a Fuka. Let's see. We could go with... Corsair here. Let's do the Corsair. We're not going to leader it, because there's nothing else in its row. Let's see, we will play a Bordage into a Pirate. I think we'll play it into Black Hand. Or we can always go Naval Supremacy. Supremacy makes a lot of sense here. Uh, this could be good. But I think what we want to do is Harpooner so we can kill off the Fuka. And then do this. Let's get more armor. More armor is good. It's a shame we're not getting Yalmar any armor right now, but nothing we can do about it. I think we'll play an Abortage. And then let's play our Black Hand. Curious how much he wants to play here. How much armor are we looking at? Eight. Are you a pirate? You are not. So I don't really want to abortage then. We have to play Bjorn. If we're being honest, Clash is probably bad against his deck though, so it's probably worth doing. Because his guy's going to be so tall that the Clash probably doesn't help very much. The wind is King Crumb is the scary thing, so something we gotta watch out for. Go play in, play this guy. Terror of the Seas can hit King Crumb, or Trom, how do you say it? There's the Jotun. Let's get rid of Troll, go Troll Day. Uh, let's see. Do this one. Having this up means we can go tear the seas plus um tear the seas plus this order to kill a king trum. I think it's time for croc. We don't have many great plays left. I guess we could armor smith. Let's do armor smith. It's quite a bit of value. Alright, we're looking pretty good here. We didn't get the resilience. We have endless voyage. We have croc. We have the carryover care troll day order. We'd like to draw Yalmar. Um, that'd be very good. That's Justinia. I was about to say, oh look, we did, but we didn't tell Justinia. We do have one pirate, two pirates, so we don't need the seagull. Corsair's not bad. Keep it over longship, I think. Alright, let's see if he has the heat wave. 
Probably does. Okay, that's interesting. I honestly don't remember. I don't think we can, if we don't infuse, I don't think we get the Cataclysm. But I could be wrong. I mean, it doesn't matter. We, he gives up. But our hand's really good here anyway. Enslave Tactics. Pretty common deck. Is this Enslave 6 or 5? 6. Okay. I actually saw Enslave 5 that wasn't Shoop the other day. They got me by playing Invocation and Heat Wave, and I thought they didn't have them. I thought they were playing Shoop. Anyway, uh, we got Yalmar. Got Supremacy. Got a lot of decent cards here. I think we do want to try to redraw for the uh, Endless Voyage. Alright, so we don't have amazing opening cards here. We're going to be honest. Because I don't even know if we have one that isn't terrible to play. Can't play this. Don't want to play this. Can't play the. Well, we could play that. Just waste its order. Can't play that. This is probably the best one. Let's see what we've got. That's uh that one's pretty good. And let's see if he's gonna seize it. We really just want him to play a unit so we can start doing things with our, our units being our cards being garbage. But if he like hits this with Joust and seizes it, it's gonna be really sad. Cause we then we we I guess we could hit it with a boardage or with black hand. It wouldn't be the worst thing. But we want to start playing units so we can get armor. I wanna see how big we can make our Yalmar. Oh, Torres, we're getting croc for sure. What else? Oh no, we want Maxi Double Pirate. Okay. That's interesting. Very interesting. Can't trigger Bloodthirst, so those aren't going to be useful. Let's go in here with a Raiding Fleet. And we'll play our Funeral Boat. I don't really care where we play it. Hopefully there's no Amnesty in his deck. We'd be really sad if there is. But this actually doesn't die. Whenever he plays a special, we can ping him. Wow, I really don't have a... Oh no, we created this one. I was like... A... For sure, we have premium long ships. We created that one, so that's why it's not. I forgive this time. Okay, that's not too bad. He did play a unit. Do you want to go black hand? Let's go black hand. We would like to set up a boardage. Got eight counters on this. Interesting. Um, we can just play the abortage here then. And then we will play the Corsair. We'll infuse this guy. A little short on armor here. So we didn't get very much yet. Not 
much at all. I wonder what he's going to play here. How many pings do we have left? We have six left. Okay. At least we're getting a couple points armor this turn. Funeral ship's really doing some work here. Finally getting armor. Now, pirate-wise, we have... If we were to abortage, we'd have to play some of these. We don't really want to. Iron s armor smith is only playing for seven. I think we'll just play the armor smith. The sea provides. Still have four more on naval supremacy. Still a funeral boat. He's gonna pass. Not too surprising. We do know he has no way to stop Voyage. So we could go for a Voyage round two. He has not Yon Cal waited. That might be something good to go for if we draw it. I think we will, but we'd have to draw it first. Uh, I'm not sure we wanna play a spying ship. This is a decent opener though. We just need the one. We're at four pings on supremacy. That's a little annoying because it gets our longship down to tourney joust range. We'll just play it here though. If we just go to round three and he, if he kills us, and we go to round three. That's fine. Go for the coup. Okay. Would like to abortage. That would require us to not play Corsair right now, and I want to play Corsair right now. Two pings left on this. All right, we'll go. We'll do this. Go Corsair. Uh, we don't want a Corsair though, because it was playing the other row. What do we do? Let's go Corsair. Yeah. He's just going to avoid the Cataclysm. But there's one ping left on Supremacy, and I don't want to play this when it gets pinged down to Enslave range. You are not this. There's no target for this now. Well, I would call that effective. Do we want to keep playing? Let's go Croc. You want armor, you want armor. And, oops, not you. You and you. I guess I do something about Croc now. And he just wasted his Vigo completely. An interesting choice. And then plays ranged Vilgaforts. I think this guy's tilted. Looks pretty tilted. Mm. Are we gonna get the GG now? In three seconds? No, he's gonna keep playing. Alright, fair enough. Fair enough. Play our Bjorn. We do have a boardage to trigger Yalmar's armor removal if we want to. He's gonna steal steal Bjorn. We got rid of the leader. That's good. Let's see what else he's gonna do. And that's gonna make a long ship. This guy's looking pretty desperate here. He could return this to his hand, I suppose. This will do seven randomly. Seven randomly. I mean, I think we can clear his board with this and Croc. 
if we hit a... No, because this is four armor. I should set up our abortage, though. You know what? It didn't do a single point of damage to those two. So, it did not set up our abortage. That's kind of tragic. We don't want to overcommit, remember. But he has not torres I mean, if we just Yalmar and then go abortage, we should be fine still. I don't know if we want to clash with Yalmar. Actually, let's make this lower. I meant I meant to uh, do the Croc clash. Yeah, let's do it. We'll do the Croc clash instead of his clash. And then that we can remove more armor when we play a raid. I guess we should have put him melee if we're going to play the Yalmar with him, but... Should go ab and play the Abortage. It won't play a pirate, but it will trigger his armor removal. I need that spirit blood to make you suffer like never before. Let's do this. Kill this. We'll play Terror of the Seas over here. You can't seize it. Then we'll go with the Abortage to trigger Croc. Or not Croc, Yalmar. And see how much armor we get. Or points. Should be kind of cool at least. Now we'll just turn all of our armor into points, and we should be good. Let's see it, Yalmar. Boom. It's a lot of points. A lot of points. There's the GG. Wasn't sure about going if wasn't sure about going for it there, especially because abortage is only a two, but figured you might as well. Squiatel, I'm curious to see if this guy is playing um, what we did the other day. Well, actually, we'll be honest, recording all these videos in one day and they'll probably come up over the course of the week. But yeah, recording like three or four videos today at the day of the patch. So we recorded it today, but the video you'll see in a day or two is where we try to make as many as big of a sublust as possible by using heist on on vanadane and then on um the guy who gives plus one to all of your whatever they're called uh, dead eyes we tried to make that deck i'm curious if he's doing it it was pretty fun when we did it to be honest this is pronunciation's commando that's an interesting card. You don't see all that often. It's not bad, though. Looks like a pretty good case for Corsair here. Because we know he's going to have to put at least one of these save, or, um, Neophytes melee. He might purify it, but then we'll know he's playing the Heist one. There. He did not purify it. Interesting. We're gonna play this pirate with a boardage. So what we want to do first then is go, probably the funeral boat or light long ship. I mean, we could just a boardage right now. Yes, yeah, do that. I 
guess he has to have two before the damage. And there is that guy. You've no idea what's to come. No idea what's to come. I think I do have an idea. I think I do. Let's go with the funeral boat. Then we'll do this. Unfortunately, that pinged that. For some reason, I thought the Bloodthirst would trigger after this damage. It has to be a then. Let's play our other Corsair. We didn't hit it a single time, so that's also unfortunate. I wanted to hit it once or twice so we could blackhand it. I guess we'll do light long ship leader ping, maybe. We do go long round three, I think, with the scenario, but we can still pressure for a win on even. Yeah, I don't know how Bloodthirst works. For some reason, I always thought if you hit the damage, you could get the Bloodthirst. I guess the only card that really happens on, though, would be a Blood Eagle. I don't play Warlord. War no, well, not Warlords, whatever they're called. Highland, yeah, Highland Warlords. I don't play that. There's Aralyn. four here. Do we take the five for incinerating? Oh, pitfall. Oh, nice. Pitfall sniped that guy. I love it. Well, at least we sniped one of his neophytes back. Of course, he's going to get to transform the Avalok, which is even better, actually. Then we got the guy who plays an elf and a trap from his deck, right? We're going to save that for later. I guess he would play it now. Just wants to deny us the range. Makes sense, I guess. Our most armor is 7. Let's go with Black Hand here. Some more armor. Armor Smith's looking pretty good here as an 11. We have Kara Troll Day also. Alright, this is a perfect turn for Maxi. And Voyage is on the bottom, but Yalmar is on top. Let's move the Gutting Slash. Let's see if we can recover from that insane abortage play we did. And by insane, I mean, like, bad instead of good. Is the only Bloodthirst special? I guess you also have um, the one that spawns the wolf. Still drew Yalmar. This is pretty good. This is Resilience, so we want to play it. Let's go Longship first, though. I don't think we can bleed the sim loss, but if we can spread out the traps and it's a trap deck, which it kind of looks like it's a trap deck here, we can spread the traps out so they're not all in one round. That's best. Let's see here. This one's pretty good. We'll have to kill that. I think we might play Armor Smith. Hopefully this is an incinerating trap. There it is. I think we spread the traps out enough that we can pass safely here. Without getting blown out completely by Eldane after eight traps. Oh, we got the scenario. Oh yeah, now that's what we're talking about. We'll take it. Now we just need to draw endless voyage.
need to draw Endless Voyage. We also don't have much armor on our guys, which is where Endless Voyage will come in handy if we can get the infused effect on it. Croc's pretty good, but the rest of this, not so much. Um, do we have a ship left? Got this one. Let's put you back. I guess we're getting both ships either way. No Endless Voyage, though. That is not good. He's already played Serpent. This could be another Incinerating. Let's play Raiding Fleet. We go pretty standard. We can't trigger Yalmar's um, armor removal, so we just go like this, 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 whatever seems the most fitting. But I think the he might have too many traps. We'll have to see. Oh, it's just a crushing. All right, that's not bad. Let's play our croc. At least Care Troll Day can give us armor than Clash on maybe help us get some more value from Tear the Seas. Right now we're not getting too much value. We want to watch out for has he played Pitfall? He did play Pitfall. Incinerating. He played Serpent. Maybe we just Maybe we just tear the seas. He's not going to go tall, so Justinia's probably more value. Let's do this. Kill that one and this one with this. Keep the armor ready. This is probably the one that spawns elves. Deception, if he hasn't played it already. Yeah, I think it's Deception. Oh no! Oh yeah, it's Deception. There's Eldane. So we want to kill off some of these dead eyes. That much is for certain. Uh, again, this guy should have been melee, but what are you gonna do? This damage is self by base power. All right, let's go here. Let's clash with one of you. Let's have you clash with another one. And let's have you kill another one. Just minimize the number of dead eyes. If he kills, if this gets pinged a bunch from the Vernaciel, it was, would have been better to keep the armor, but we'll see. Oh, it's just Isagrim, so this was better anyway. All right, so then we do this, and we got some pretty good Justinia value here. It doesn't matter if we play her here or not, because she has the same amount of damage to herself, so let's just play her here. Hey, GG. Even though we messed that round one up with the abortage, pretend like that didn't happen. <laughs> uh. Vampires. Good old Renfrey, I'm sure, will make her showing once again. Let's see what we've got going on here. A portage. I think we're going to cut this, despite it. I wanted to try it out because it's new, but it doesn't seem to be doing great. Although it does cycle our deck, it just doesn't seem to be very consistent about it. Uh, this hand is looking pretty solid. Actually, I don't know if we need Maxi here. Maybe we put Maxi back. Let's put Maxi back. I guess Cindy. Okay, our hand's really good. Play the funeral boat. Let's give it veil. Vampires love when you give things veil. Means they can't flutter right away with leader. I mean they can, they just put it on the flutter, but yeah, there it is. Let's see what we can do. like to get our abortage going. <laughs> He's never moved the veil. 
All right, let's go. Let's go naval supremacy. Pick on one of these. I think it's gonna lose its armor, but having two of those pinging is never a bad thing. There's then good old Nekarot. It's getting pretty low there. I think we'll just put a the range Corsair charge on him and call it good enough. He'll probably die. There it goes. Funeral boat's getting some pings in here. I'm liking it. He's gonna kill the funeral boat. I, I can tell this funeral boat's annoying him. All right, let's go with Black Hand. Looking pretty good so far. If you can win round ones against vampires, it's never too bad. Oh, by the way, was that a thinning card he played? Yeah, so this is not Renfri. And he played Feast of Blood. This is non Renfri. I feel like this non Renfri version better, but. Do we abort a cheer and play Bjorn? I think it really secures the round, so I would like to. Let's do this. And then we'll play Bjorn. Remove this guy. Probably remove him. From the Most likely get pinged by this fire. Very unlikely he lives. There he goes. By the way, I like how we got... I think we got plus four on this for playing Raiding Fleet. So that's kind of funny. Oh, Ring of Favor he didn't even play. Yeah, this is looking good. We want to bleed him out round one. Or two. We want to bleed out Regis. And preferably also if he's playing it, Morvud. Although without Renfri, maybe there's no Morvud. Probably is. Let's see here. This hand's not amazing. Two pirates, though. Let's throw Maxi out and see what we're looking at. So we would draw these two, but not Terror of the Seas. I think I'm okay with that. Terror of the Seas is pretty awkward if you don't have the armor going on it throughout the game anyway. We know we're getting Yalmar and Croc, so it might be worth just doing the scenario here. Oh, he's going to banish it. Not naval supremacy. There's no way he's banishing anything else. Yeah, there it goes. Oh, he he did. Wait, what? I, I am confused, but we'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, let's see. Do we want to go Voyage here? Let's just go Voyage. He's probably playing Heat Wave, so let's just go for the Voyage now. The fact that it's non non ren free makes me think there's a heat wave, so we'll just do this. We're losing naval supremacy this time. No, he doesn't care about naval supremacy. I guess he's concerned about uh, Fukusha or something. Okay. There's the defender. I guess we ping this, or infuse this. Then just take advantage of having that on it. You can get rid of that next turn easily. Now do we lose naval supremacy? No, we don't. It's down to two, so I guess it, I get it. Spanish Bjorn. Oh, we're playing Golden Necker Vampires. Okay, things make more sense now. And there's the Necromancer's Tome, right? Yeah. Not sure what that bleeding was about. Guess it's for this. This does seven. I guess we'll go with the Astinia. Okay, I did not expect to snipe the 
I did not, did not expect to snipe the Oriana, but we will not be sad about it. He does have his Necromancer's Tome, though. We still have Naval Supremacy, right? No, now it's gone. Wait, did he banish it now that all the token, all of the counters are used up? Might have. Let's play the character all day. Uh, this looks pretty good. We can combo the character all day order with the seagull and this Bjorn Drakkar. And then kill off one of these flutters. Or we can just leave the order there. So we're drawing, we are drawing Croc and Yalmar, which is pretty strong. We do want to bleed the Regis. Oh, well, he doesn't have Regis. He's playing Golden Necker. This isn't going to do much. Just hold this, save the care troll they order for round three. Losing a seagull. There's no Regis, so Golden Necker and Siri are the threats, and he used the Golden Necker. I think he's a little short on bleeding. Could infuse this, kill with this. So hypothetically here, we can infuse with this, leader kills this, and we can kill this. I think we do it. Of course, if he has Yeah, I think we do it. Fuse here. Get rid of it. And then we get rid of we do this on this. We'll get rid of this one too. And we just play this for two points. With two flutters gone, I find it hard to imagine he can get out of this without playing both his cards. And I don't. And hopefully, one's not Siri. If this last card's Siri, we messed up. We're drawing Yalmar and Croc, so we have a lot of value coming up. And the shorter round three is the better in that case. Okay, it is Siri. It's unfortunate, but... I can't imagine he has much value left in his deck. So let me get Yalmar and Croc. Maybe he has Incubus, although bringing back Great Sword is probably bad. Could have one of the swords, I suppose. Um, so we can ping this. Then we can Cataclysm its row and then clash with it. I'll bring back the Seagull and it'll give Yalmar more armor. I don't think Golden Necker has a play that beats Yalmar Seawolf here. Never mind, it does. Sort of. Almost. Almost beats it. Almost beats it.
At least we're going second. At least we're going second. Let's just keep this hand. Oh, he's playing discard though, so it's a little bit different. Whoever gets the first damage in these matchups gets a huge advantage. So we're just hitting this with Gutting Slash. Start getting armor. First damage makes a massive difference. Because you get one armor and everything, and it makes it harder for them to start getting armor. It's just really bad for the opponent. Could do this, don't get Funeral Boat, but I guess it's fine. We don't care if he kills our seagulls. It's because we're getting more armor. Can't get armor from killing these. Let's go with a Corsair. Those are tokens, they don't go to the graveyard, so they won't trigger the boat. We can get more armor. More armor's good. Just playing a boardage for two. That's how desperately he needs the armor. I guess we should just kill a stupid boat. It's actually being a problem. Let's see if he passes. He does have double leader charges left, but I guess we should have killed that boat earlier. Fire. So we can play our funeral boat now. It's a little late, but it's not too bad. There's a whale harpooners in here. Sometimes I like whale harpooners in these deck with corsairs because you can move stuff to the row with the cataclysm. Women, children, elders. Could I just trigger a boardage, like he did for two. I like black hand better though. Me a coward? Interesting. What was that interaction? Oh, he did the care toll day. Troll day, that's what happened. Gotcha. I gotcha. Let's go. Let's play our croc. Got the heart. Not great. Let's keep pressuring him uneven. Makes our Gustinia good now. Okay. So basically, we use two leader charges to win uneven. I'm not sure a boardage will be any use. Definitely two of them won't be much use. That's interesting that we've got Voyage. We do have two pirates. I'll put this back. I think we'll go long ship first, then see what's left. I 
You might just ping this with leader, like Corsair this, hit with leader. We'll see if we want to voyage. That makes sense, I suppose. Let's do a voyage. We go voyage here. It's not great. But we are uneven. Maybe the best play is just to force out his voyage with our voyage. Let's take that approach. And then rely on armor smiths later on. Like keep this. Then armor smith. Go for these two pirates this round. Because we have a nice combo with Drakkar and Yastini if he doesn't kill the Drakkar. How big is his armor smith? This is only a 5. We have an 8. That's pretty good. It also means that Drakkar is really nice in fusing this. Then we go with the Astinia, which will be quite nice. Hopefully we hit this guy a few times. Like 5, which we're guaranteed to, and it kills him. Let's see what he wants to do now. Still have 8 armor here because they died to the damage, unfortunately. We serve her who was oh, we're going to go with Freya's Blessing. That's interesting. Like a longship or something? Whoever is getting infused. I didn't even realize he discarded that earlier, but he must have. He's gonna kill the Drakkar. Guess we'll play Seagull. It's not a great Seagull. At least we have an 11 value armor smith. He can't, I guess, I guess he could lead her against Justinia, kill everything. He might do that. That'd be bad for us. Alright, that's what he's gonna do. Well, that is a problem for sure. Now, if he still has his, he'll probably win. That's unfortunate that he had the Astinia. Oh, he's playing, um... He's playing King Bran. That's interesting, too. Double Armor Smith. We don't want a Vortage here. Double Armor Smith's kind of good, actually. We're gonna have to rely on them if we're gonna win. Where's the Endless Voyage? No Endless Voyage, okay. See what we get. I really wish on create armor. I wish really, really wish we had something out already for the armor smith. But I guess we'll have to pick this. This is King Bran. And let's drink. We need to kill Funeral Boat. So I think we'll just have this guy clash. They play armor smith or. I think we have to get rid of this guy right now. Our seagull's back. Play our maxi. I guess we could play an armor smith. Plus ten. Pretty good. I don't think there's endless voyage then. If he's playing King Bran, I don't see if it's endless voyage. Especially with Skjordal. Fair enough. Uh, 
let's go with Maxi then. Your magic can't harm me. No of course, magic those are our top three. Would have liked to see two of those. I think we're fine though. We've got some pretty decent points left. Plus three. Yeah, that's fine. We have a plus eleven. The sea provides. And he knows what our card is. We haven't played Terror of the Sea yet. So that's GG. So that's the deck. It's pretty interesting. I've always liked Endless Voyage. It's pretty fun. As far as this deck, Yalmar Seawolf, his clash is really good. I do like him, and his ability to convert your armor into points is nice. The only thing is, it just feels like there's not quite enough consistency, and there's some things we can't beat. Mainly no unit decks. Like, Tatterwing decks are a huge problem. I'm not sure how we'd beat those. We'll work on this deck. This one's work in progress. But, like, I like this version. It just didn't seem like a Bordage did very much, but... Maybe we're using it wrong, or we'll have to adjust the deck. But we'll try and make some adjustments. Anyway, I did enjoy playing it. It was pretty fun. Uh, the only problem is that you get polarizing matchups because you don't really have flexibility into no unit. So that's kind of an issue. And your flexibility into tall, like the problem with um, Keltalis while we're on the subject, because I played like two of them earlier, is they infuse. They Crystal Skull or they Leader the cave troll and you can't kill cave troll in round one without infusing it with Dr bjorn's drakar pretty much because once they get it above the range of yalmar and croc you just can't do anything they just play like cave troll with crystal skull and then they play keltalus and what do you do so that's awkward but anyway that's the deck hopefully you enjoyed we'll be making some adjustments to this one probably revisit it in the future and we'll see you in the next one That'll be it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. And you can check out some more videos over here. And thanks for watching.